Rebuilding three Stuart steam plants part four. In this episode I'm still working on the Stuart score engine, fettling the bed casting using a small grinder and a file. You are always one step away from disaster with this job and plenty of patience is required. I also fettled the inside edges of the box bed followed by immersing all the painted parts in cellulose thinners to remove the old paint. In the USA it's called lacquer thinner but it's the same stuff and it does the same job. Take a close look at this clip. You can see how bad the castings are. There's been very little attempt to clean these up. I don't know why because the rest of the machining's okay. In the previous episode I showed starting this job using a needle file. But this is a much better method for a couple of reasons. This grinder that I'm using is exactly the diameter that I need to accurately size the slots in the trunk guides. Please be aware though that this method takes no prisoners. If the small grinder slips and grinds the cast iron in the wrong place, the job is ruined. It's really important that these trunk guides are parallel all the way along and nicely defined. I've never worked on a Stuart score engine before and I was quite pleased to find out that the grinder that I had in my box of grinders was a perfect fit for this job. You can see how rough the other side is, I haven't done that yet. It's not a good quality grinder, I think it's out of a set that I bought in the centre aisle of a local supermarket. But for this application it is perfect. You have to control it at all times though, I've got a firm grip on both the casting and the drilling machine. It's important that the grinder does not slip and grind where you don't want it to. After a while the slots in the trunk guides were really good. I'm very pleased with these. I just need to blunt the outer edges using a piece of sandpaper because at the moment they are razor sharp and this is not a good idea. I think now is a good time to get rid of some of the oily grime which now contains iron filings. But immediately after that I'm now making proper iron filings by filing the iron part of the trunk guide. This needs to be just as flat as the rest of the end of the trunk guide. And that had been machined. The cast iron in this area was very hard, it was slightly chilled and it took quite a while to file it flat. But eventually I got there, first on one side and then the other and it looks so much better and that's even without being painted. The video is running at a higher speed just to get through it in a reasonable time. Yes, that looks a lot better. It's starting to look like a model engine now. There's quite a lot more filing and grinding left to do. All the edges of the parts have got the casting sprue there. This was quite easy to remove as the casting sprue was very thin and brittle. I am, however, using quite a coarse file. This is not a needle file, just a small file. Slowly but surely I'm knocking the casting into shape but I haven't finished yet. There are some areas where the file cannot reach so it's back to the grinder for the round bits in the corners. I could use a round file but this grinder's far better because it leaves a very good finish once you've gone over it. A ground finish in fact, not a filed finish. Once again the video is running at a higher speed to get through the job in a reasonable time and then it's back to the filing. After the filing it's back to the grinder. Once again I cannot stress how important it is to control the movement of the grinder. Ok so if you accidentally dig into the casting you can fill the casting but I don't want to do that. My hands are now very dirty but to be honest they were dirty to start with because I've been working on the Land Rover and using some polyurethane filler to fill the gaps between the Land Rover's body panels. This polyurethane filler was very black and when I touched it with my fingers it wouldn't come off. I tried various solvents and all were ineffective. And that is the end of the grinding and filing sequence. I've also been filing and grinding the box bed so everything looks a lot better than it did. And I've got some good news, the cylinders are reversible. So without further ado I'm going to reverse the cylinders and this is what they look like now. 
with the steam chest inlets to the top. I'm pleased to say that the engineering standard is good enough to allow this to happen. This was a very good quality food container. Now it's a very good quality container for cellulose thinners, but unfortunately it is warping and bulging slightly. With the exception of the box bed that just doesn't fit, I'm putting all the painted parts into the cellulose thinners, and hopefully, after some time has elapsed, the paint should fall off. And if it doesn't, then it's going to stay where it is, because it's baked on. This often happens with steam engines. And with the exception of the end cylinder covers, I will rub down the paint with some sandpaper to key it for another coat of paint. I'll clean up the cylinder end covers in the lathe and leave them unpainted, because this is largely what happens with full-size steam engines. And that is it for this episode. I can do no more until the cellulose thinners has done its work. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.